RCP family and friends, it's so very good to be with you guys this morning. I don't know about you, but I am counting down the days to Pentecost Sunday. I cannot wait to see each and every one of you actually in person, and I cannot wait to hear the sound, the sound of us worshiping together. As Pastor once preached, come out of your cave. You see, during this pandemic, we've all been forced into isolation. But during this time, I can't help but remember the story of the rebirth of an eagle. You see, this majestic bird, after it reaches the age of 30 or so, its physical condition has deteriorated to the point that survival is difficult. Its talons lose their flexibility and cannot properly grip prey. Its beak becomes dull and bent, and its feathers grow ever so thick and heavy that it begins to stick to its body and it impairs its flight. So this majestic bird makes the choice and retreats to a mountaintop into a dark cave and isolates itself. For over a five month period, it violently knocks off its beak by banging it against the walls and rocks of the cave. It plucks out its talons and then it plucks out its own feathers. Each stage producing a regrowth of the removed body part that renews the eagle and actually allows it to live for another 30 to 50 years. An eagle can actually live up to 80 years, but to reach its maximum strength, to be able to defeat its enemies and to have grip on its foundation, to be rebirthed and to fly to higher heights, the eagle must make a hard decision either to stay in the deteriorated state that it's in and never fly again, or follow after those before it by going through the process of rebirth, which now brings me to the folk, today's focus scripture, John 12 and 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also be my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. In the New Living Translation, it reads like this. Anyone who wants to serve must follow me because my servant must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who, serve, who serves me. Whether we realize it or not, we make our decisions every day based primarily upon one core decision, who we have decided to follow. Will we choose the Lord or will we choose ourselves? Each of us must count the cost of the decision to follow the Lord. What will it mean for us to really follow him? Are we willing to lose everything if necessary? Are we willing to leave everything behind? Will we follow the Lord no matter the cost? You see, every day, all throughout the day, we will be tested on this decision. Two years ago, my husband came home and dropped some alarming news in my lap. Guess what, darling? We're moving to Georgia. Excuse me? <laughs> Say again? What do you mean we're moving to Georgia? Who in the world lives in Georgia? What about my children? What about my parents? What about our marriage? What about our church? All these questions and more flooded my heart. All these doubts because I'm going to be transparent with you. My marriage was on the rocks due to infidelity on my part. Our spiritual faith and walk with the Lord was shaken. And my, fin my financial security was beyond a mess. Am I supposed to just drop everything, change everything, and stop what I thought was the process of healing for my family? Despite where I was spiritually with the Lord, I knew I had to go into the prayer closet. God, what are you doing? Why are you removing me from my safe zone, from things that are familiar to me, especially now? It's only been a year since my husband and I decided to work on our marriage. What about my mom? Who's going to take care of her? We have no money. Lord, you said you were going to guide me. Lord, you said you were going to be with me. Lord, you said that you would heal me. So why are you doing this? Silence. Crickets. That's what I heard. But there was a peace that I could not explain. So with that being said, here I am in Georgia.
You see the entire ride here, my nerves were through the roof. I plied out every awful scenario in my head. Surely, surely in the next few months after moving to Georgia, I would be back in Colorado, divorced and backslidden, surely. We arrived in Georgia late at night. It was pouring rain. And when we pulled into a home that we have never seen before, it was a wreck. I woke up the next morning overwhelmed. Really, God, this place? Full of doubt, full of uncertainties, full of fear. What now, Lord? What now? So I actually stepped out of my new home because I needed to take a walk. I needed to remove myself. And I looked up and there, right above my house, a beautiful, perfect rainbow. And there the Lord spoke, trust me, this is exactly where you are supposed to be. I am right here. Two days after our arrival, we made our way to our first service at RCP. It was a Wednesday night service and pastor preached on being called, being placed, submitting to the process of transformation and following after the Lord. Following, being placed, trusting in the process and answering the call. It has been over a year and God has revealed himself not only to me, but to my husband. It has revealed things in our marriage that I could never begin to imagine. The overflow of blessings that we have received, the healings, the revelations have been unimaginable, but God knew what he was doing from the beginning. All I had to do was make the choice to follow. Just like the eagle that I mentioned earlier, it made the choice. You honestly think the eagle wants to go isolate itself in a dark cave? You really think it wants to tear and rip away pieces of itself? Imagine the pain it feels as it plucks away its feathers from its own body, tearing and stripping its talons, but it is necessary if it ever intends to fly higher or to even fly again. It makes the choice to strip itself away from all that it's weighing, all that it's weighing it down so it can follow after those before and so over storms. We too must make this choice. Some people will choose to follow after new jobs, mates, homes, friends, but they will never consider following the course to change themselves. Our will plays a vital role, a vital part in not only our lives, but also in our walk with God. We, have, we may have the vision of God and a very clear understanding of what God wants. And yet, if we are not careful, we will let our carnal will take over and try to do it our own way. I'm guilty of doing it. Then what? then we will find ourselves in a wilderness of our own making. We must remember when we let our will, we must remember when we let our will get in the way of what God is endeavoring to do with us, the desired results are never the results that God intend. We must allow the will of God to overflow into us and to align our will with his will that he is revealing to us. We do this by following after him. What does it really mean to walk in the spirit and to follow Christ? Walking and following after the spirit, to be quickened, to make alive. We either live in the spirit or in the flesh. To be led of the spirit means to be spiritually influenced by God's spirit in every area of our lives. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. In Proverbs 6, 9 reads, Backslidden. It's a phrase we unfortunately hear too often. This simply means that one who had been following after the Lord had allow and allowing the spirit to influence them now have diverted back to allow their flesh and carnal nature to influence their actions. Following after the Lord and serving him, we must be willing to be transformed. Making the choice to turn away anything that is holding us back from following him and not only that, but holds us back from the rewards that have been promised to us. Matthew 6 and 24 reads, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. 
Joshua 24, 15 reads, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you will serve, whether the gods which of your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It is up to you to follow after the Spirit of God. It's not up to anyone else because the call is yours. Seven times in, relation, in, in Revelations chapter 2, the Master said, Let him that has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. In 2 Corinthians 3 and 17, Paul writes, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Paul's subject in this chapter is spiritual revelation. Before following after Christ, we see through a veil of darkness. Yet when, that, yet when we are born again and following after the things of God, that veil is removed. We, when we are walking with our master and following him, then he will begin to give us a new revelation. We begin to walk in agreement with the leading of the spirit. So then liberty comes. The word liberty means release. Where the spirit of the Lord is control or allowed to work in our lives, there is release. You ask release from what? Release from sin, release from habits, release from generational curses, release from carnal thinking, release from death. And then there is a release of blessing, overflow, joy, peace, hope, healing, victory, and revelation. Why? Because when you choose to walk with the Lord and follow after him, your flesh is no longer in control, but the spirit of the, of the Lord is directing you. Proverbs 20 and 27, the spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord, searing all the inward parts of the belly. The New Living Translation reads like this, the Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Before we make the choice to follow and walk with the Lord, we operate from a carnal standpoint. Yet when we allow the Lord to lead and we follow after him, our emotions, intellect, and will begins to be changed. A spiritual awakening begins, a rebirth. Our lifestyle, our conduct, our view will forever be changed. So allow the spirit of the Lord to guide you, RCP. Continue to follow after the lover of your soul and allow the spirit to release things in your own life. Allow him to shine his light in every area of your life. Strip away what is weighing you down from spiritual flights. There is so much reward and so many blessings when you choose to truly walk and follow after him. It is not just because, it is not just being in church service, nor is it a feeling. It is a choice, a daily choice, which we are called to walk in. It is up to you, RCP. Choose you this day. Walk in the overflow of promises. You cannot go wrong when you are positioned in his perfect will. Trust the process. Trust in his character. It will not always be easy. And yes, being transformed can be painful at times and following something that you are so unfamiliar with or things can be uncertain, but have hope for the Lord. He is good. In Deuteronomy 31, 6 reads, be strong and of good courage. Fear not and be not afraid of them for the Lord thy God. He it is that doest go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Deuteronomy 3 and 18, and the Lord, he it is that doeth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. It says he has already gone before you. That means he has already made the way. All you have to do is follow. He is a good shepherd. We must trust him and follow him. And if we will do so, there will be grace to light your way. I cannot wait to see the rebirth of RCP on Pentecost Sunday. Together, let us follow after our master and together let us come out of this pandemic anew. I love you, RCP. I cannot wait to see you all in person. Be blessed today and follow after the things of the Lord. Be safe.